What's up guys, in today's video we are talking about flashover. Now this is a question I've gotten from many of you out there to do a video talking about flashover. What is it? What are the signs? What can you do if you are in a flashover? And just go over that. I found a video that has a really good example of it. Uh, as always, I'll put the link to the full original video down below. I always want to give credit where credit's due. But in this particular video, I'm only going to be using a section of the entire video. I might actually do an entire response or breakdown to the whole video because there's a lot of lessons that can be learned here, a lot of good, and some things that they might have been able to do a little bit differently. But in this video, I'm going to be just showing before the flashover, talk about some of the signs, the actual flashover, and shortly thereafter. Let's get started. All right, so here's the backstory on this fire as much as I could tell from the description in the original video. This looks like this is just a single family residential home in a small, smaller neighborhood. Looks like it's a little bit of older construction. The houses are relatively close together. The first thing you see and you notice is, at least I see and I notice, is the power lines. Shortly before this clip started, uh, this power line that is going towards the house just burned up and came down. Uh, the guy taking the video is ironically standing right underneath it. It's probably not the best idea. The other thing that I noticed is you see a lot of flames on the Delta side. Remember, I've talked about this in other videos, the front door of the house, the front of the house where the front door is facing the street is the Alpha, the left side Bravo, back side Charlie, right side Delta. So if you look at the right side of this house, you see the flames coming out of the window. Um, that's usually a really bad sign. That means this, this fire has a lot of ventilation. There's a lot of oxygen. It has a lot of fuel that it needs to keep burning, which means the temperature is going to keep increasing. The second thing it's hard to see in this still shot, but the roof on this, uh, this home looks like it's metal. That means inside there, it's like an oven. It is trapping that heat in there. It doesn't really have anywhere else to go except venting out the sides. The other thing is if you're on a fire like this, you're gonna to wanna to pay attention to the D side exposure. You can see there's a little driveway there and that house to the right. Flames like that coming out of the side, and they were worse before, could easily catch this house on fire and certainly melt the siding off of this house. So it's usually a good idea to set up some sort of exposure protection, which they eventually do. Um, to just, just cool that off so you don't have fire jumping from home to home to home. Now let's talk about flashover. First thing, what is flashover? The FDNY firefighting procedures defines it as the sudden involvement of a room or an area in flames from floor to ceiling caused by thermal radiation feedback. That's a very good definition, but an easier definition is everything in the room, in a particular room, all the contents in that room that is potentially flammable, all reaches, reaches their ignition temperature at the same time and everything simultaneously ignites. That means everything in the room gets so hot, it all catches fire at once. Now, fire is one of those things that it's, there's a science to it, but it's also fairly easy to comprehend. Smaller rooms mean you're probably going to flash quicker because there's less space for that radiant heat to move around, so it's going to reach temperature much faster. What are some of the signs of flashover? First is rollover. Now you can't really see rollover in this video, but if you ever find yourself as a firefighter going down a hallway or in a room, make sure you look up. If you look up and you see in thick, dark, heavy smoke, if you see little flashes, little lights, uh, little flames just kind of flickering here and there, that's a potential sign of rollover. That means that that smoke is getting a, to a certain temperature that the unburned particles in the smoke are beginning to ignite. The simplest thing you can do is just open up your hose line, hit the ceiling and cool that smoke down. So that's the first major sign is rollover. The second major sign, and this one's really obvious here, is thick, dark, heavy smoke that looks like it's coming out of there with a purpose. It looks like it's charged. That smoke, as you can see in this picture, looks so heavy and dense, you can't really see through it. 
Now, when I say charge thick, heavy smoke, I mean that in contrast to light, lazy smoke. Light, lazy smoke means essentially if you put out a candle, I'm sure everybody's blown out a birthday candle, you kind of see that white, wispy smoke kind of go around. That's not what I'm talking about. What I'm talking about in thick, dark, heavy smoke is something like this. That's usually a telltale sign, not always, that you have potential for a flashover. The next thing is you have free burning fire. You see, like we talked about earlier, out of the delta side of this house, this fire is burning freely. It has plenty of oxygen. It has plenty of fuel to burn and increase that temperature. A flashover is a temperature-driven event. It happens when a certain temperature, when everything in a room hits a certain temperature, and everything ignites all at once. So keep that in mind when you have free burning fire. With this thick, heavy, dark smoke, you have real potential for flashover. And then the last one is intense heat. If you've never been a firefighter, the, the heat that happens during a flashover is unbelievable. It can easily go north of 1,000 degrees at the ceiling. Uh, there's, there's training simulations and uh, training trailers that they'll send around where you can go into, a, into essentially a trailer where they will light a fire and they'll let the temperature get that high. You could feel it burning through your gear. It can burn your fingers, it can burn your knees. Any area that's kind of doesn't have a lot of protection, doesn't have a lot of uh, coverage from your turnout gear could easily get burned. So those are some of the things you're gonna wanna look out for. You definitely see some of the signs here. They had some guys in this fire kind of going in the front door and then they then they back them out. You'll see them step away even further from the from the structure here in a second, but it was a good move on their part to pull these guys out because once you get caught in a flashover, it's very, very difficult to get out of the situation. So let's keep going and we'll talk more about it here in a second. So right there you see what I'm talking about. I mentioned earlier that flashover is when the unburned particulate in the smoke ignites as well. A lot of people don't realize that that, that thick, dark, heavy smoke is fuel for a fire. You saw all of that smoke ignite simultaneously. That is extremely hot. When you're in that situation, there's not really a lot that you can do. These guys were just kind of spraying water on it from the outside. There should have been some other things going on. I mean, that, that's really, for, for those guys standing in the front yard, that's really all you're going to do when a, when a structure like this flashes. You're just going to try and spray water to cool it down, and you're going to try and protect the exposures and just drown this, this uh, house with water. At this point, it's already kind of all the way gone. But if, God forbid, you ever find yourself in a situation where you are in a flashover, or you're in a situation where there's potential for a flashover, first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is get out of there. Uh, like I said, if you get trapped in a flashover, your chances of survival are very, very slim. You only have a few seconds to get out of there. If for some reason you're not able to, I kind of gave the scenario earlier that you're crawling down a hallway and you some, see some rollover and some flames going back over behind your head. Like I said, the best thing that you can do is open up that hose line get water on it, cool it down. It actually works surprisingly well if you've ever done a, a training evolution where you are in a rollover, or I'm sorry, not in a roller, in a flashover trailer. It's amazing how just a little bit of water can cool the entire area, the entire room. So as always, I hope you guys found this useful. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, give this video a thumbs up, consider subscribing to the channel, and I'll see you guys in the next video.